On board the Gregory boat, the scene is one of quiet yet steady activity. The boat is plowing through the fishing banks off the coast of Lower California, Mexico. Mrs. Gregory and Joan, acting on Captain Bradford's orders, are locked in their cabin, while Jerry and the captain take turns at the wheel where they can keep an eye on the Swedish engineer, Peterson. After a radio message from the girl commander of the Euclidean submarine they know to be following them, Joan Gregory has hinted that Peterson may be the Euclidean electrical wizard Thales in disguise. Captain Bradford is just relieving Jerry at the wheel, and they stand talking before Jerry turns in for some much-needed rest. I'm all right, Captain. Yes, I know you're all right, but you're tired, Jerry. Oh, that won't hurt me any. Of course it won't. Be good for you if you get enough rest to make up for it. Now you run along and turn in. Well, I'll go in a minute. But there's a couple of things I want to talk to you about first. Well, maybe it'll relax you a little to talk. Go to it, Jerry. Oh, for one thing, look at that barometer. Huh? Well, looks like we might have a little weather. Well, we're getting down into the right latitude for a Chubasco. Well, we might get one at that. But we're a little too far off the coast for one of those Mexican hurricanes to hit us very hard. Well, just the same, I've got a notion we're going to get hit by one. You ever ride one of those things out? Yep. When I was only 12 years old, Dad took me on a deep-sea fishing cruise with him, and we got caught in a storm down there. The fishermen called it a Chubasco, and it was sure something. Yeah, they're mean, Jerry, and they come up quick. Well, could we get through one in a boat like this? Oh, I think so, if we were lucky enough to hit the edge of it. And we're out too far to get the center. Well, this boat looks mighty small when you think how high those waves get. And that wind blows plenty. That's bad, all right, Jerry, but we've got unusual engines in this boat. Nearly 3,000 horsepower. We can hold into the storm forever if we don't get swamped. Yeah, if. Well, we're not in any storm yet, and I don't believe we're going to get in any one, so stop worrying about it. Okay, Skipper. You said you had something else you want to talk to me about? Yes. Well, it's sort of about the same thing, but it's it's about something else. That's very clear, I'm sure. It's about the same thing, but it's something else. Well, you know what I mean. It's about the storm, if we run into one, and about those powerful motors of ours. You sound serious, son. Talk some more. Well, you know how to run these motors, and I guess it's all right if you stay awake to watch them every minute. But if anything happens while I'm on watch, I'm not so sure I can handle it. If anything happens to the motors, that's not likely, but Peterson can do more with the marine engines than he men on the West Coast today. I know he can, and I'm afraid he'll do it. What? Well, he knows just too plain much about those engines to suit me. Yes, I'm beginning to see what you mean, Jerry. If we do run into a storm, those engines are going to mean the difference between getting out of that storm and not getting out of it. And if Peterson is his fellow Thales, he might not feel like helping us any. That's what I meant. Well, to tell you the truth, Jerry, I'm not the least worried about Joan's suspicions. Oh, of course, Pete could easily be spending part of his time on the island as one of those scientists. The rest of it around Los Angeles, posing as a marine engineer, but I just don't believe that's the story. Well, I do. Joan says those men of G-47s are from every country in the world. And if Peterson is smart enough to be as good an electrical engineer as he is a marine engineer, well, he could be Thales easy enough. Well, I'll admit there's room for your worries, kid, and I'll keep an eye on Pete if we run into trouble. Well, we won't have to run very far. Looks to me like we're in a storm right now. No doubt of it now, Jerry. In 92 minutes, we're going to be somewhere near the center of a man-sized hurricane. Then I'm not going to turn in. Afraid it wouldn't do you much good. You'd soon get turned out anyway. Well, maybe I'd better go and wake up Mrs. Gregory and Joan. Might as well. They're never going to be able to sleep through this, and they might feel better to be dressed and ready for it. Well, I'll go and wake them up. Then I'll come back to you. Be sure and tell them to put on plenty of warm clothing and some oil skins if they're coming out on deck. Okay, Skipper. I'll tell them. Oh, boy! Those engines sound like the stern's coming clean out of the water. Yeah, who is it? It's me, Jerry. You'd better get up and dress. We're running into a storm. I can't hear you. I said it's Jerry. You'd better get dressed. We're running into a storm. Put on a lot of warm clothes. We're dressing now, Jerry. We'll put on our slippers and be out in a few minutes. I'll be at the wheel with Tex. We're going to there. They were already getting up, Tex. Just as well. This thing is going to be bad. It's coming faster than anyone I ever saw. Must have sneaked up on us in the dark. Everything's running all right, though. Oh, we'll get through it, but we're liable to get pretty wet before it's all over. Is it all right for Mrs. Gregory and Joan to come out here on the deck? It is now, but if it gets too bad, they'll have to stay in their cabin. The engineer seems to be making those engines behave. He'd better. We wouldn't be any too happy here without motors. Say, 
Where's the cook? He's trying to make some hot coffee, but I'll bet he's having trouble keeping the coffee put on the stove. Hey! That's too rough for me. I don't know about this thing, Jerry. If it gets too bad, we'll use the radio and ask someone to stand by for us. Nobody's going to come into the middle of this thing and try to find us in the dark. No, but they could be waiting to pick us up when we get out on the edge of it. Can you tell if we're in the worst part of it? Well, we're not yet, but the trouble with these things is that you can't tell where the center of the storm is. We may be heading right for it. Well, I hope it never gets any worse. We'll be all right as long as those motors keep going and the rudder post stays in. One of those Euclidean submarines would look pretty good to me right now. It would if that's done. When you get down in the water a few fathoms, you never know there was a storm up here. Our girlfriend must be right under us with her stuff. Yes, and that's an idea. Supposing you go to the radio shack and see if you can raise her. You may be glad she's following us before this thing's over. You want me to go and do it right now? Yes, and take Pat and Joan in there with you. It'll keep them from worrying about this storm. Okay, I'll see if they're ready. At the wheel. But he wants you to come into the radio shack with me. I'm going to call a girl commander in the submarine. Are we in danger, Jerry? No, but I, I think we are. Joan, you go with Jerry. I'll join Tex at the wheel. But, Mrs. Gregory, the captain said for me to take you into the radio room. I'll be responsible for that. You take Joan into the radio room and do it Tex orders. Watch out for the spray when you pass that cabin. Is the boat able to stand such a storm, Jerry? I don't know. Come on. We've got to get busy in the radio shack. Why do you call the radio cabin a shack? Oh, for the love of my Joan. This is no time to ask questions. Now hang on to my coattail and we'll see if we can get around to the starboard side. Hang on tight, Joan. I will, Jerry. Boy, that's getting bad. It does seem so on this little boat. Well, this little boat is all we've got right now. Hope I can raise the commander on this thing. What wavelength were you using the last time we talked with her? Three meters. Then she will be waiting for your signal on three meters. I hope so. Commander S-1, Jerry Hall to Commander S-1, Gregory Boat, Euclidean Submarine. Hello, Sub, Jerry Hall to Commander S-1. Commander S-1. Gregory Boat, you may proceed, Jerry Hall. Proceed with your message. Hello, Commander. Looks like we may need you before this is over. The storm is getting pretty bad up here on the surface. What can you do to help us out? I will bring my command up to three fathoms. Drop your bow anchor at once. I will take you to three fathoms. Okay, Commander. Well, Joan, I guess she thinks it's serious or she wouldn't do that. You stay here and listen to this radio, and I'll report to Tex and drop that anchor, and I'll come back in here with you. I will do as you wish, Jerry. Hey, look out. You don't get hurt by some of this stuff sliding around in here. Now hang on the radio table. Yes. It's folded to the deck. I will take care of myself. Hurry and drop the anchor. I'm going right now. Hey, Tex! Tex! Mrs. Gregory! Hang on to the rail, Jerry. We're right here. I just talked to the commander of the submarine. Get closer, Jerry. We can't hear you. I said I just talked to the girl commander. She had me drop the bow anchor. She's coming up the three fathoms to grab it with that magnetic fin in the stern of the sub. She wants us to reverse the motors to hold the anchor chain steady while she drags us out of this. Good work, kid, and that's fine. All but one thing. We haven't got any motors. What? The motors stopped, Jerry. And I'll bet that guy Peterson stopped them. Looks like it. We haven't shipped enough water to hurt the engines any. Then that means Peterson is daily, just like Joan said. I'm afraid it does, Jerry. Boy, this boat's sure rocking around us. I hope that girl hurries up about tying the submarine onto us. Is Joan in the radio room? Yep, she's all right. You go back in with her, Jerry, and you too, Pat. I'll stay here with you, Tex. 
Go back and stay with Joan, will you please, Jerry? And keep in touch with the sub all the time. Tell her our motors are dead and she may have to use all her speed to keep us straightened out. Okay, Tex. I'll tell her. Is the storm getting worse, Jerry? The boat is tossing about much more. Well, I don't know about the storm, but our engines are dead. Was that an accident? No, I don't think so. And the captain doesn't think so either. Then I was right. Peterson, the engineer, is Thales, the Euclidean. Yeah, it looks like it. Now keep quiet while I tell that girl subcommander about our motors. Jerry Hall, the commander, S-1, Gregory Boat, Euclidean submarine. Jerry, the submarine magnets have just picked up our anchor. Yeah. Now keep still and let me try to pick up the commander. Jerry Hall, the commander, S-1. Jerry Hall, the commander, S-1. Gregory Bolt, the Euclidean submarine. Our motors have stopped. Can you hear me? Our engines have stopped. Can you hear me, commander? Jerry Hall, the submarine. Hello, commander. Can you hear me? Our engines have stopped. Hello. Hello. The journey back to Magic Island is proving much more difficult than the escape from the island. Just off the coast of Lower California, Old Mexico, the Gregory boat has run into one of the hurricanes so common to that locality, known as the Chubasco. The storm is so bad that the small boat is in great danger, which is increased when the motors stop and leave them helpless. Jerry radios to the girl commander of the Euclidean submarine, which is following them, and she picks up their anchor with a magnetic fin on the stern of the submarine. For several hours, the storm rages then is gone as suddenly as it appeared. We find Captain Bradford and Mrs. Gregory standing at the wheel as the storm subsides. Oh, Tex, that was the worst storm I've ever been through. Certainly the worst I ever went through in a boat as small and helpless as this one. Now that the wind has gone down, we're moving awfully fast. Do you think it's safe to be towed at this speed? Might be a good idea to go a little slower. That girl certainly makes that submarine move along. What are your chances of starting the engine? Can't tell until I look at them and see how much damage Peterson did. You're sure he did it? How else did it happen? Accident? No chance. Those motors quit cold when they were running perfectly. That was no accident. Where is Peterson now? That's what we'll have to find out. We should go and stay with Joan in the radio room and send Jerry to me. Well, can't I help you? Nothing for you to do. I'll feel safer if you're in the cabin with Joan when we round Peterson up. And while you're in there, call the submarine commander. Explain our position to her. Tell her that this speed is too high in smooth water. She'll have to cut down to about 25 knots if she's going to lose us. Very well, Tex. And you'll be careful, won't you? Don't worry about me. Run along. There's Jerry coming out of the cabin now. Well, I'll hurry in and stay with Joan. Oh, Mrs. Gregory. Storm all over? Well, it looks like it, Jerry. I'm going in with Joan, and the captain wants to see you right away. Okay. Joan's listening to the radio. Morning, Skipper. That submarine sure dragging us along. Yeah, a little too fast, Jerry. I just told Mrs. Gregory to radio that girl commander to cut her speed to 25 knots. She'll have us flying if this keeps up. Did you try to start the motors? Haven't had a chance to see what's wrong with them. Didn't dare leave this wheel while the storm was so high. Oh, I'll take the wheel if you want to look at the engines now. Good idea, kid. Take it over. And you'll have to handle it like a basket of eggs until we lose some of the speed. Well, how about the course? <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. Oh, sure. I forgot. Submarine's towing us. Yeah, when a boat like this makes 35 knots, you can be sure something's towing us. Well, I'll shove off and have a look at the engines. And, uh, Jerry. Yes, sir? If the engineer shows up before I find him, tell him to come and see me. Understand that now. Don't enter into any conversation with him. Leave that to me. Aye, aye, Skipper. Hello there, young father. Huh? Oh. Hey, say, where have you... Oh, never mind. Go see the captain. There is the captain. Down in the engine room, trying to start the motors. He is going to find that pretty hard job, you betcha. I try all night to start the menu. Yes, you did. Yes, I did. Okay. What stopped them in the first place? How should I know? Oh, maybe you shouldn't. You're just the engineer on this boat. When a motor gets ready to quit, it quits. By Jimmy, what makes us go so fast? Oh, you don't know, huh? How should I know? Yeah, I know. You're just the engineer on this boat. And I suppose you didn't know that there was a Euclidean submarine tow in the service since 2 o'clock this morning. I wonder why the boat goes better without the motor. Sure, and being an engineer, you figured it was all right if the boat got along swell without you. So you crawled into a lifeboat and went to sleep. Yeah, that's a pretty good guess. It's no guess. The lifeboat was the only place you could have been. 
Now, you'd better go down to the engine room and see the captain. I got to go see Mrs. Gregory You're first. not going one step toward her cabin? What was that you said? You heard me. Don't you even start around that side of the boat. Now, you get in that engine room and start explaining to the captain. Explaining what? Plenty of things. But the captain will ask the questions. My business is steering this boat. Then give your best attention to your business. Hey, where did that voice come from? You will learn where a great many things come from if you attempt to prevent my reaching Mrs. Gregory's cabin. So, Joan was right. You're Thales, the Euclidean electrical engineer. Precisely. I am Thales, as well as the trusted and simple Swedish engineer on this boat. Well, you won't be trusted anymore. Now, are you going to start for that engine room, Peterson, or, or Thales, or, or whatever your name is? I am going to Mrs. Gregory's cabin. Oh, no, you're not. Just take one step, and I'll use this. So, you have one of the small 60-second ray guns, eh? Uh, you bet I have. And I know which end of it works, too. You would be doing a very foolish thing to use that on me. G-47 would not regard your act as particularly friendly to Euclidia. Well, something tells me you're not going to be in any too good with G-47 after he hears about this trip. We were supposed to be allowed to reach the Magic Island safety, and you're sure not helping us along any. I will be the judge of what G-47 will think of this trip. Well, in just about five seconds, you won't be the judge of anything. Let him have it, Jim. Boy, Jimmy, you sure laid him out. It is written when frying pan hit head, head was in wrong place. Well, you sure know what to do with a frying pan besides cooking it. It is a poor skillet which will not serve two masters. Well, I saw you sneaking up on him, but I was afraid you'd never make it before he turned around. Jim Lowe do not care which way head is looking when flying pan falls. If he looked too quick, I drop pan quick. Well, you sure did a good job. I'll run down the engine room and tell Captain Frapper to get up here quick. Maybe more better let Skillet fall on head one more time. Uh, then this fellow boy will not wake up too soon. Well, he won't wake up too soon. The way you hit that deck, I'll be surprised if he wakes up before we get to the island. Now, you run and get the captain. He'll know what to do from here on in. You take Frypon. If he put head up, you put it down again. Okay, Jim. Mighty good idea to have this in my hand at that. I go now, get Captain Bradford. Remember, Jerry, if head come up, Pan, go down. Don't worry, Jim. I'll drop it. Well, Jerry, we've been waiting for you to call us to breakfast and... Why, Jerry, what's this? Oh, this is the frying pan from the galley. Did you hit Peterson with it? Uh-uh, not yet. Well, what's happened? Well, the Chinese cook let this pan fall on Peterson's head and he pushed it a little bit as it fell. Jim Lowe knocked the engineer unconscious with that frying pan? He sure did, but that's only part of the story. Peterson's is Thales. Are you sure, Jerry? Oh, he got so mad when I couldn't let him come to your cabin that he forgot to talk like a Sweden sound just like G-47. Then the warning of that girl submarine commander was correct. Well, I'll say it was. And I think this guy was coming to wreck our boat. But if he'd done that, he would have gone down with the rest of us. Well, I, well, I guess he figured on the submarine saving him. He didn't believe me when I told him he was in plenty bad with old G-47. Mm, there's no doubt about that. But, Jerry, where's Jim Lowe now and Captain Bradford? Well, the captain went down to the engine room, and I sent Jim down there to get him. Here he comes now. All right, Jim, you stay there until I get back. Coming right up, Jerry. Everything all right here? Well, sure is. There's your engineer. Tex, from what Jerry tells me, I gather that Jim Lowe is the hero of the hour. Yes, he is, and he knows it, too. He had to explain to me just how he hit Peterson with it. And he said the sound of the frying pan on Pete's head was music to his ears, like the stroke of a big temple gong. It did make a swell bong when he hit him. And Peterson was really Thales. Looks like it. Well, what do we do with him? Only one thing to do that I can see. Tie him up and sit on him until we get to the island. Well, I don't like the idea of having to watch that guy for days and days. He's too slick. I think you're right, Jerry. It would be hard to keep as clever a man as that prisoner on this boat for long. Say, wait a minute. I've got it. Jerry. Yes, sir? Go in the radio room. You and Joan raise the girl commander on the submarine that's towing us. Ask her what to do with this fellow. She'll know fast enough. A good idea. She ought to be told about this anyway. Yes, yeah, she's certainly entitled to the information. After all, it was her warning that allowed us to be prepared for this. No doubt of it. Run along, Jerry. Have a talk with that girl in the sub. Then you and Joan come back here and we'll see about some breakfast. Oh, can Jim cook it without his frying pan? You can leave the pan here with us. Just now, Jim's looking for the lost pieces of the motors. The lost pieces? Yes, I'm afraid Pete, or rather Thales here, took some of the vital parts off the motors and threw them overboard. Nice little fella he is. Well, here's your frying pan. And if Jim's still busy when we get back, Joan and I'll cook the breakfast. Well, call that sub as quick as you can. Aye, aye, sir. Jerry, can I come in? One moment until I unlock the door. 
Come in, Jerry. Boy, have I got the news. What is it? Shut that door and let's get this radio set started. The radio is ready to use now, Jerry. What is your news? Well, you'll hear it if you listen when I tell it to the girl's submarine commander. Jerry, you have found Thaley. I'll say we have. Where? Lying on the deck. You found him there? No, I left him there. How did he get there? Jim Lowe put him there with a frying pan. A frying pan? Yes, sir, a frying pan. Now, keep quiet. Let me call this girl submarine on the commander on the scrub. But, scrub. Jerry, are you sure I said, keep quiet. Let me use this radio. Captain Bradford's orders, and he said to hurry it up. Very well. Calling Commander S-1, Jerry Hall on Gregory Boat to Commander S-1. Hello, submarine. Gregory Boat to Euclidean submarine. Hello, Commander. Commander S-1 Hello. to Jerry Hall. Proceed, Hall. Proceed with your message. First thing is, will you please slow down to 25 knots? We can't stay in the water much longer at this speed. We'll be up in the clouds. We'll curtail speed to accommodate proper towing of your craft in smooth water. Proceed with balance of message. We found Thales. Proceed with your message. Well, gee whiz. Aren't you surprised? I said we found Thales. Thales. I understood you. Proceed with your message. Oh, golly, whiskers. You might get excited about it. It is what I warned you to expect. You are wasting time, Hall. Proceed. Hurry up, Jerry. Okay, okay. Well, we found out that our engineer, a fellow Mrs. Gregory and Captain Bradford have known for years, was really Thales. He sure sounded Swedish enough until he got mad at me. Then he sounded like old G-47. Our Chinese cook knocked him out with a frying pan. And we want to know what to do with him. He will be returned to Euclidia as a prisoner. G-47 will deal with him. Yeah. We've figured that. Proceed with your message. Yeah, we figured that. But we're not sure we can hold him that long. There's nothing on board this boat that was made to keep a guy like that prisoner. I will accept the responsibility of his delivery to G-47. Okay, Commander. We'll have him ready. I am so glad we will not have him aboard this boat. So am I. There goes the magnet. She's dropped her anchor chain, and in about a minute, the nose of her sub will be sticking up out of the water. Come on, Joan. We've got to get ready to turn Thales over to her. 